Welcome back, everyone. This weekend, Asian families around the world will be celebrating Lunar New Year and the Year of the Ox, which means there is going to be a lot of amazing food. Here to help us uh, celebrate with a brunch to bring in the good fortune is food blogger Mary Tang. Mary, gong hei fa chai. Hi, gong hei fa chai. Happy Lunar New Year in the Year of the Ox. Wishing you and everyone a healthy and prosperous New Year. We are so excited, Mary, and I've already started celebrating because Lainey sent me this beautiful peace lily to start off the Happy Lunar New Year, and I'm so excited. It's also FYI hiding my camera that's going to shoot my B-roll. So hot tip. Uh, more importantly, <laughs> we are going to celebrate with brunch with what I understand are lucky foods. So take us through what you've brought us today. So I am so excited to talk about my favorite things ever, the Lunar New Year brunch, and that is dumplings and dim sum. So during this time, it's all about symbols that have positive meanings that will dictate your year. So that means that you need to eat lucky foods. As they say, you are what you eat. Uh, also wearing lucky colors like red and gold and also having well wishes for others with red pockets, lycy. And these are traditions that have been passed down by generations. I love these traditions. So we're gonna start with dumplings and I've never met one I didn't like, but why are they considered so lucky? So a little bit of background about dumplings. So Chinese dumplings, also known as Daozi or Gaozi, has a history that traces back over 1800 years in China and very popular to eat during Lunar New Year. And many families have many traditions and many come together and make dumplings together, especially during New Year's Eve. But dumplings also have other meanings. It means family, unity, love, culture, tradition, and also wealth. We take a look at the dumplings. If you look at the shapes, they look like little ingots. And ingots are ancient money made out of gold and silver. So the idea is if you eat it and you serve it, it brings prosperity. So let's eat more dumplings. But first we have to make them, right, Mary? And like you said, <laughs> I have gathered with my family to make dumplings before. Uh, the thing is, is that it is a lot of work. Uh, so I don't do it that often. However, since you are an expert, I'd love to get some tips from you. How do you make yours? So dumpling wrappers can be homemade and it's made out of flour and some warm water. And then you can add some of the fillings such as ground meat and veggies. But we're gonna do the easier route today and we're gonna use some store-bought dumpling wrappers as you see right here. But there are two tricks, kind of sh little secrets that really make juicy and delicious dumplings. First thing is actually to have some liquid to your meat. So it could be water, stock, or in this case, the reserved shiitake liquid from the from rehydrating them kind of add that in so it really makes it extra juicy and then the second thing is to kind of work that meat so i'm not sure if you guys have ever made sausages but it's a very similar technique so when you have sausage ground sausage meat you want to take that meat in your hands or and then really kind of slap that down into a bowl or a dish and kind of do the same thing so once you have that meat you really kind of slap that meat and kind of works out that mean it makes it extra juicy and delicious. Mary, can I just say how lucky I feel right now that I get to learn how to make dumplings for the first time with an expert? So take us through how we're gonna make these little pockets of treasure. So we're gonna do three folds, and the first one's gonna be a traditional crescent fold. So a little, a little moon. So take the wrapper in one hand, or you can place it down on your chopping board and put a, about mm -hmm. a heaping tablespoon into the middle. Next, you're gonna dip your finger into the water and you're gonna circle just around the edges of the wrapper. Next thing is to carefully fold it over and squeeze out all the air. So it's basically folded over. And to make the crescent, you literally just fold it forward. Now, in terms of the number of pleats, it really doesn't matter. Um, to make the pleats right at the top, you literally fold it into itself. Man, I have so much deja vu. Like, I, I feel like I'm 10 again. Oh, I love this. So next, once you get this shape, is to fold the corners into each other. And what that does, it makes a little 
round dumpling. So anything round during Lunar New Year, it signifies unity, family, and completeness. And plus, it's so cute. I love the round one, so cute. May I see, Mary? So the second one, oh. like, looks like that. So oh my god, it's so and then cute! My round one is too fat, which is not bad. Fat at Lunar New Year is good. All right, Mary, I think we're ready to graduate Jess to the third kind. Let's do it. Yes, okay, the third one's gonna be a little different, so don't steal it yet. But once you get to this point, where it's meat in the middle, and then you put the water around, is that you wanna pinch your fingers and meet in the middle. Like a pouch? Yeah, a little pouch. So it's a little triangle dumpling. Oh my gosh! Mine looks like a clove of garlic. Did it work for you guys? I really messed up my triangle one, but look what I created instead. Oh my God, it's really cute. Oh, that works. It's a little basket. It works. Oh, that's very supportive. <laughs> Mary, I was just gonna say, I can't wait to eat these, but as luck would have it, you already sent us some that are already prepared. So take us through the different ways that one can actually prepare the dumplings. Yeah, so with cooking, you can pan fry, you can boil, and you can steam. Well, in this case, uh, for simplicity's sake, I did steam them in these bamboo baskets, or you can use a similar basket. Make sure just to line it with some napa or some lettuce. Make sure there's a lid, and you steam it for about 10 minutes, and that's it. Mary, the black beans in this sauce is like, Oh my God, you don't, yes, the chili oil has black bean in it. And uh, it's kind of my little secret. Oh my goodness, thank you. It makes me so happy. You've included these dumplings as a part of a dim sum spread. So for those who are not familiar with dim sum, can you give us a little bit of an introduction? It actually means touch of the heart and it's linked to oh. Cantonese cuisine. And uh, what it is, it's a lot of mini like tapa-like dishes and dumplings and you eat it family style and it's served with tea. So dim sum is also known as yum cha in Cantonese, which translates to drinking tea. Mary, you've also brought a noodle dish. Will you tell us how you made it and it, if the noodles are very specific and if you have to make it in a specific way? Yes, yeah, so for during Lunar New Year, it's super important to have noodles. In Cantonese, we call it term salamin, which represents longevity. So the type of noodles does not matter. It could be you know, Shanghai noodles, Chamei noodles, wheat noodles, as long as it's like a lengthy noodle. And here I have one of my favorite noodles of all time, and that's Cantonese Chamein. I like the variety. So you have the wheat and egg noodles, but you also have some veggies, meat, and seafood. And I see some, some other dishes as well. What are they and how are they lucky? Yeah, so with symbolic foods, it's the way it sounds in Chinese and how it's translated. So, for example, apples um, in, in Cantonese is ping go. So the ping word is related to safety. Um, and then turnip cake in Cantonese is called lo ba go. So the go word means higher. And it comes from a phrase that you say in Lulu or called Bo Bo Go Sing. The phrase uh, relates to advancement in career or school. So uh, if you eat it, hopefully you'll advance in your career or school. Yes, Jess, we, we wish you Bo Bo Go, go Sing, which is higher and higher you rise. And you are the breakout star, <laughs> Jess. So your star will shine even brighter during the year of the ox. Um, you know what, Mary, I see that along with the food, you sent us some red pockets. What are your traditions with red pocket? And who doesn't like red pockets, right? Money, money, money. <laughs> yeah, so every family has their own traditions. In my family, typically the married couples give it to younger kids or non-married couples, but my, my parents are very kind and they still give, give me red pockets. Um, and typically what we do is we sit down, we ha during brunch, we pour them tea, then we exchange well wishes, and my parents give me these beautiful red pockets. And now it's your turn to have some tea and see what well wishes I have for you guys in the Lycee. I'm gonna pour my tea in my hot water dispenser, a very Chinese thing <laughs> over here. Oh, Jesse, what did you get? 
I got a beautiful message. May your year be filled with an abundance of smiles and laughter. I love it. I got a well wish. Mine is Sun Tai Gin Hong, which is wishing you good health. And we all need a lot of that right now. Mary, thank you so much for being here. We so enjoyed all the treats that you sent to us for a lucky, lucky New Year bounty. Uh, thank you so much. And Gong Hei Fa Choi again. We'll be right back. Happy New Year. Thanks for having me.